Hi, good morning. It's uh, so wonderful to see you here bright and early in the morning. Uh, it's lovely to be back in Mexico and it's lovely to be back in a place where people can pronounce my name. Because you know, I spent about half of my life in the United States where they cannot pronounce my name. So they call me Tao or Towel or Tall. Whereas I come here and it's easy because everyone just says, Que tal, tal? <laughs> but I must say, uh, I'm less happy about the hour that I was allotted to be the first speaker at 8.30 in the morning, I mean at night. And um, many of you may be tired, especially those who felt the earthquake was exciting, got your adrenaline running. And being tired, it reminds me of the story of a professor who one day comes to class and suddenly he notices that one of the students has fallen asleep. It happens. So he calls the student who was sitting right next to him and he says, uh, excuse me, do you mind waking up your friend? He's just fallen asleep. So the student says to the professor, professor, with all due respect, you put him to sleep, you wake him up. <laughs> but I promise that I won't wake you up, you can sleep away. Because sleep is important for happiness. And it's not always easy being happy. In fact, I got interested in this whole topic of happiness, of well-being, because of my own unhappiness. I was an undergraduate at Harvard studying computer science. And I found myself in my first year doing very well academically, doing very well in sports, I played squash, doing well socially, and yet being very unhappy. And it didn't make sense to me, because looking at my life from the outside, things looked great. But from the inside, it didn't feel that way. And I remember waking up one very cold Boston morning, going to my academic advisor and telling her that I'm switching course. And she said, what to? And I said, I'm leaving computer science and moving to philosophy and psychology. And she said, why? And I said, because I have two questions. One, why aren't I happy? Two, how can I become happier? And it's with these two questions that I went on to get my undergraduate degree and then my graduate degree in business focusing on happiness in the workplace. And I did become happier as a result of my education. And when I graduated, I wanted to share what I've learned with others. And that's when I started to teach. What I want to do today is share with you some of the things that I've learned over the last 20 years working, living, experiencing this field. Taking from research so that you can apply it to your life. Your life at work, as a manager, as a leader, your life at home, as a parent, as a partner, a friend, as a community member. So here is one of the first things that I learned as a student of this topic of happiness. You see, most people, most people around the world, be it here, be it north, south, east, most people believe that there is a strong relationship between success and happiness. That in fact, more success will lead to more happiness. This relationship, however, turns out to be wrong. And not a little wrong, completely wrong. And I want to share with you two stories, one experiment, one experience, illustrating this point. So the first experiment, this is done by Professor Daniel Gilbert, who is a professor at Harvard University. He went to other professors at the most important point of their career. What is the most important point of a professor's career? It's when they hear the tenure decision. Meaning, when they hear whether or not they get tenure, whether or not they get lifetime employment at their university. He went to these professors a couple of weeks before the decision was made. And he asked them the following questions. First question, how will you feel if you get tenure? If two weeks from now you're told, congratulations, you're here for life. And the 
response of the professors was extremely happy, ecstatic, happier than I've ever been before. Question number two, how long do you think you will be happy for if you do get tenure? And they said, well, for a very long time. This is a dream come true for me. I no longer have to be under pressure to publish constantly. I can finally be truly happy. And then he asked them a third question. How are you going to feel if you do not get tenure? In other words, if you're fired. And they said, devastated, terrible, worse than we've ever felt before, probably. And how long are you going to be devastated for? Well, for a very long time, until we hopefully, it's not certain, but hopefully find another job elsewhere. And then he went to them at the point when they heard whether or not they got tenure. And as they predicted, those who got it were very happy. Those who didn't get it were very unhappy. But then he went to them a few months later. And what he found was that almost with no exception, those who were happy before were happy after, whether or not they got the tenure. Those who were unhappy before the decision was made were unhappy after, whether or not they received tenure. In other words, getting tenure led them to be happier, but very quickly they went back to their previous state. Not getting tenure made them very unhappy, but very quickly they went back to where they were before. Success did not lead to happiness. And yet, while we see this in different areas, people continue to live their lives as if success is what will raise their levels of well-being. Whether it's a promotion, whether it's becoming wealthier, more famous, whether it's getting better grades in schools.